Welcome to All About the Bass on Anderson's TV. I'm Nathan. And I'm the captain. Uh, and today, uh, actually this was Nathan's idea. Uh, he wanted to kind of go and grab some super affordable stuff from the store. And so I guess where we're starting with is probably where a million bass players have started, maybe not a million, but thousands and thousands of bass players over the years have started, where they've gone to their local music store and they've bought a bass starter pack. Mm -hmm. um, the one that Anderton sells most of is the uh, the Squire or the Fender bass starter pack that comes with this excellent uh, Squire jazz bass and this superb Fender rumble bass as well as some accessories. But there are other starter packs, you know, there are other brands that do starter packs and, and you know, they'll all invariably come with a, a similar get up. Um, I like the Fender one uh, because I think the quality is, is uh, very high, you know. Um, Quality's high. It's a classic look, of course. I mean, you know, it doesn't get any more classic than this, does it? No, it certainly doesn't. And I kind of think that it's important with a starter instrument. It is possible to go to some kind of, you know, toy stores and stuff like that and go, oh, look, there's a starter guitar pack and it's £79. I'll mm. buy that for little, you know, my little boy and he or little girl and she can get started. And, and there's a point where you just go, it's so bad that well, yeah. you know, no one's ever going to learn to play on that. No, of course, if the frets are stuck out the side and they're cutting your fingers to ribbons, you know, yeah. I've, I've played some cheap stuff like that. It's, yeah. it's not going to make you want to play it. You know? Yeah, so the, the, the nice thing with, with brands like you know, Fender, and as I said, there's other good brands, you know, Ibanez, Yamaha, all that kind of stuff, is their starter packs generally are proper you know, instruments. So that little bit of extra that you pay maybe on day one it is, is certainly worth it, in my opinion. Um, so look, uh, Tell us about the, well, first and foremost, so this is a pack. What's quite nice when you buy this from Anderson's or from any retailer is it, you get a box. You haven't got to think about, oh, have I got everything I need to get going? Because you have. Uh, so you get this bass guitar, this amplifier. You get um, a gig bag for the, which is like a padded case for the for the uh, the bass. You get a tuner so that you can keep your bass in tune. Very important. Get a guitar lead, which is kind of essential. Uh, and you get a like a tuition, DVD. I'm not sure if it's an actual DVD or a download okay. code or whatever. But don't worry, uh, it's not me. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> and you can play like this in the first two minutes. Uh, then after that, it's kind of once you've done that first bit, you know, it's very much how how much you put in is what you're going to get out. So if you put in eight hours a day practice, you're going to learn very fast. And if you put in half an hour a week, uh, you're not. Uh, but that's fine. That's the same with any kind of musical instrument. But look, take us through. What have you got? Take us through the sort of the basic specs of your. <clears throat> Squire Jazz. Okay, well, you know, obviously it's it's the, the classic jazz setup. You've got two single coil pickups, uh, you've got a volume for each pickup, and then a, an overall tone. So you can, you know, balance, uh, you know, the volume of each pickup however way you want, really, sort of infinite possibilities to do that. Um, so anybody that's, uh, you know, that knows about basses obviously knows what a jazz bass is all like. If you're a starter, uh, beginner, then I guess these are the things you need to know. You know? Yeah, I, one of the things obviously on the jazz is um, it's a it's a uh, one of the very first electric basses ever. So the design harks back to the fifties. Um, this is a this is not a uh, a short scale bass or anything. It's excuse me exactly the same sort of length as the full Fender one would be. So for very young budding bass players, I might suggest that, that there's another Squire bass pack in the range that has um, a short scale Jaguar bass with it, okay. uh, which might you might find a little bit easier. When I say very young, what do we think? 13, 14 years and upwards is kind of okay with that and below that, 
you might want something a bit smaller. Yes, I suppose that sounds all right. I'm trying um, to remember when I started playing the bass. I think I was about 12, just on yeah. a regular bass. So um, so maybe you can. It just depends how tall you are as a bass player. Depends the, how long your fingers are. Remember, a regular electric guitar kind of stops about here. So you can start on a full-size regular electric guitar from a little bit younger, I think, than maybe you could on a, on a, uh, okay. a full-size bass yeah. guitar. Um, there are other brands, you know, Ibanez is probably our other really popular starter bass, um, and they're popular because the, the body shape on an Ibanez bass is, is smaller, so it's a little bit oh, more yes, contemporary, yeah, it's a bit although more the, modern. the length is the same. Um, and of course, I just think these are ridiculous value, you know, I mean, it's, it's a solid uh, older body. It is, um, I see that. Maple neck, rosewood fretboard. You know, it's a lot of bass for not a lot of money. And it sounds, it sounds really good, you know, that through this amp, I think it's, I was really surprised when we yeah. plugged it in. I wasn't expecting, expecting it to sound as good as it does, so uh, yeah, it's cool. So amp wise, uh, for those of you that are total novices to this, Fender and Squire are the same company. Uh, Fender, basically, that's everybody's heard of Fender. But, you know, well, pretty much everybody's heard of Fender. The kind of the, 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 the one of the pioneers of electric, uh, you know, guitars and basses. Um, and amplifiers. Uh, Squire is their kind of uh, well, it started off really as their sort of student range, didn't it? And it's kind of grown really, so it's a bit bigger than that now. But it's essentially it's their uh, lots and lots of copies of the Fender products, but built to a much more affordable. Price. The amp is a Fender. It's part of their brilliant Rumble Bass uh, series. Uh, so this is the smallest one, the 15. You can go right up to a 500 watt Rumble Bass if you really, really want to. Um, it's a lot of rumble. It's a lot of rumble. And in terms of power, sorry, knobs and buttons, you've got a volume control, three tone controls, treble middle bass, somewhere to plug some headphones in, which I'm sure uh, you know your neighbours and uh, other people living in the house with you will be over the moon about when you're learning to play. <laughs> and you have what's called an auxiliary input, which is where you can plug um, something like a, an iPhone into um, to, pl to play your music through, so you can jam to your music. As soon as you plug the headphones in, it cuts the speaker out, so you can practice silently. So what would you say, kind of like at 15 watts, what, what, what does that really kind of mean in terms of you know what you could do performance-wise with this? Well, uh, it really is um, just something for, for practicing and using at home. Yeah. Uh, and maybe, you know, sort of jamming with your mates, uh, you know, if they've got little practice amps as well. Yeah. It's not going to get over a, a drum kit, for instance. You know, no, you're going to sure. need a, a louder amp for that. Uh, but of course, you can always upgrade later. That's no problem. Uh, you know, they do a 40 watt amp in this range that, um, you know, isn't particularly expensive, a couple of hundred quid. Uh, and that'll be fine. You know, you can then use it. Do you think you could keep that bass? You know, is that, is that what, you, so what do you think you'd upgrade first if you, you know if you had the pack and you're a year down the line? Do you think it's the bass is a keeper and it's the amp is the first thing that's likely to go? Or I think so, yeah. And yeah. It, it's not it's not for quality's sake. It's just purely for volume. Yeah. You know, that's what you're going to need more of. The, the bass is fine. You know, if you, you could you, I could gig with this no problem at all. The bass yeah. is really nice. Yeah. Uh, and this I, is, I find that kind of crazy to be honest. With you that you know you are not the first person who said that uh, and. I even know people who have got, you know, hot rodded up Squire strats that, oh, that, yeah. that you know, yeah. that gig in reasonably decent bands, you know, and it's just, I think they've just sort of gone, well, it's, it's, you know, yes, it's not, you know, it's, it's not an heirloom or anything like that, but it's a, it's a perfectly functional. No, well, that's the thing. It's not going to have the same sort of investment potential as mm. a US one, but no, as far as a, as a bass goes, playing wise, it's, it's lovely, you know, it plays just as nicely as you know a, a lot more expensive bass yeah so uh, now it's cool the, the bass is no problem keep that and then maybe get a, a bigger amplifier at some stage i think as a tip kind of once you've got your I, i've always been a little bit sort of um what's the right word so you've got your small power amps like your 15 watt amps mm. and then you've got you've got all your sort of 30 40 50 kind of watt amplifiers and I, and I kind of feel that those are always a bit pointless to me because i I kind of think on a bass guitar, I think as a general rule of thumb, you need about three times the power of a bass guitar amp to compete with an electric guitar amplifier. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like a, a, a 10 watt electric guitar amplifier is probably going to be at least as loud as, say, a 30 watt bass guitar amplifier. Yeah. Well, you certainly need more headroom with a bass yeah. amp, that's the thing. So, because so uh, a bass amp's going to start breaking up a, yeah. lot, a lot earlier if, yeah. you, if you start driving it. So, so I, I would, personally, I would always say really anything less than. 
and probably a 80 to 100 watt bass amplifier, in my opinion, is just a home use amplifier. Okay. Admittedly, a home use amplifier that's perhaps got quite a bit more bass in. Well, I go along with that. that. Yeah, I, I think um, that you buy, you know, get the biggest amp you can afford. Yeah. And then I guess the, yeah. that's what you say about that. But then, yeah. So your next step up for me, the next step up from this would be, you know, when you when you're you've got a buddy who plays uh, drums and is saying, right, come on, let's do some stuff. You know, let's just set up in the garage or in a little village hall or whatever. I think you then go to 100 watt bass amplifier mm. as a minimum, really. Mm. Uh, and there's tons of that. I mean, that money-wise, off the top of my head, you know, sort of 250, 300 pounds for, it'll get you that kind of power okay. of bass amplifier. Yeah. But yeah, and then you, but then you keep this forever because you don't really want your 100 watt bass amplifier, you know, in your bedroom. Well, um, your family certainly don't. So let's just let's just be a little bit critical of a couple of things that you're going to have with this base pack, uh, uh, and this isn't this. I'm being utterly honest here. This isn't a criticism of uh, these particular models. This is just a criticism of lower end uh, bass guitars and bass amps mm. in general. Uh, cabinet rattle. It, it's you know these things. The speaks in here, even though it's a even though it's a relatively uh, low powered bass amplifier, it still moves a hell of a lot of air. And you're almost certainly going to have something in the cabinet sounding like it's rattling a little bit in the background. And it's kind of one of those things that you've just got to go, it is what it is. It won't come through the headphone socket because it's a, it's a mechanical rattle, if you like, rather than a distortion. You may even hear it in this demo. I don't know how sensitive the mic is, but you may hear a, just a tiny weenie rattle in the background. I don't think you can get away from that with a small... No. Amplifier like this, yeah. whatever brand you buy. And on the bass, my only real criticism on, on, on the, the lower end bass guitars is that is the, uh, the the reinforcement of the neck it is is uh, not as stable as if you were to go and buy a much more expensive bass guitar. And so what I tend to find on, on the lower ones, you need to be reasonably familiar yourself about how to just tighten the truss rod a little bit because you're, with all the pressure of the strings pulling the neck forward, the lower priced bass guitars necks have a tendency over time to just come forward a little bit, and it's like a it's like a two second adjustment, isn't it? To 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 it is repair, it's, to it's, fix a, it. it's a very simple adjustment to make actually. This bass adjusts just up here with an Allen key. It has a metal rod uh, that runs through the neck. Uh, it's slightly bowed, and you can either tighten it um, to bring the neck straighter or loosen it to take uh, you know tension off this way uh, and uh, yeah with temperature mainly that that's the that's the real thing that does it uh, you know you'll find you need to adjust them you know I mean we just took this off the wall uh, and, it, and it needed adjusting it and it took yeah. me 10 seconds it, it's yeah. nothing you know you just get an allen key like that in the top and then you tweak it, you either tighten it up or yeah. slacken it off, and then you get it playing. It, it, yeah. But I, I, I've kind of noticed that over time, you know, on you know, on higher priced um, bass guitars. I mean, the same applies to electric guitars, but I think bass guitars, because there's so much more pressure on, you know, because the strings are so much heavier, it happens more quickly on a bass guitar. Um, that on a, on a bass guitar, you would, you would certainly, uh, at this price point, I, I suspect every two or three months, if you weren't aware of, what you needed to do to just have that small truss adjustment, I think you'd, you'd very quickly find that after six months your bass felt very uncomfortable to play because the, the, the neck had come forward a little bit. Yeah, it well, it's, it's not a bad thing that, that anybody, you know, learning bass needs to be familiar yeah. with adjusting it anyway. You know, oh. do it yourself. The, the mere fact that you are watching this video on YouTube means that you can just go type, 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 how to adjust the truss rod on my bass guitar. Yeah. And a zillion videos will come up and show you how to do it. And there so it's, it's really, really simple. And you get the Allen key with the bass as well. So it's not like you need to go and buy any other tools. Look, that's our, that's our little demo. So uh, I haven't told you the price. I think there's, there's uh, these are just under 300 pounds for this complete setup. Um, it's the saving it represents is, if you were to buy this and this separately, it comes to about 320 pounds. And then of course you've got all the accessories thrown in as well. So the fact that this is just under 300 pounds is probably saving you upwards of 50 or 60 pounds compared to buying all the stuff separately. Okay. Uh, there are other, as I said, there are other base packs that'll be a similar money. I personally, again, would avoid anything sub 200 probably. I think that's where you go into the, it's really not very good. 
Well, maybe that's something Realm. I could look, look into. Well, Andersons won't stock it, you see. Oh, I, don't I think see. it's very good. I won't really? stock it. Uh, so I'm just telling you from my experience of looking at, you know, what's around. That's my personal opinion. But hey, if you've got a 150 pound base pack that you think is amazing, put it in the comment section below and I'll go and check them out. But I, I doubt very much that there will be one. Um, anyway, let's play out. Let's play out. Um, given some, I mean, we've kind of done the, the, the tones, really, haven't we? So just we've done the tones on the bass. You want to have, maybe I'll fiddle them out with the amplifier. Right. Whilst you're playing, goes. I will fiddle with the EQ as we fade into the distance. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Got any other suggestions for things we can do in the? I can't even say that. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any other suggestions for things we can do in the future, just pop them in the comments section below, and uh, hopefully we can do that soon. I've been the captain. I've been Nathan. See you next time. Toodle pip. Thank mm -hmm. you.